Thirty years ago, the Soviet Navy was to all intents and purposes an extension of the Red Army, responsible for coastal defence and limited submarine warfare. Today, it's the second largest navy in the world. In submarines, it is the largest. It includes an impressive array of modern ships with modern weapon systems, elements of which could be organised in a series of surface groups to give cover and support to its submarines. This is just such a group based around a Moskva-class helicopter cruiser with its attendant destroyer. This film was shot from a Royal Navy helicopter in the Mediterranean. This is the Kiev, which has given its name to a new class of aircraft carrier. There are now another two at sea, the Novorossiysk and the Minsk, and they're building a fourth. They operate long-range helicopters and the vertical takeoff Forger Strike aircraft. They also have a missile capability. This is the Berezina, again recently filmed by the Royal Navy. It's the first of a new class of fleet replenishment ship, designed to operate worldwide in support of surface groups. This is the Ivan Rogov, the first in a new class of amphibious ships, which again is large enough to operate worldwide. These ships are not just defensive, they're designed to project Soviet policy throughout the oceans of the world and have the capability of posing a direct threat to our survival. The Soviet amphibious force has all the equipment needed to fight on land, including its own infantry and tanks. The Soviet Navy, in fact, has more tanks than some of the smaller NATO armies. It has its own air force too, one of the largest in the world. But undoubtedly the main threat for crippling the West lies in its submarines. The Soviets already have the biggest submarine force in the world, yet they're still building at the rate of one every six weeks. The latest Soviet submarine is massive. It's bigger than a World War II battleship, and it has two hulls which are pressurized in between so that it can dive very deep indeed to escape either detection or attack. is not a big navy by superpower standards, but it is modern, well-equipped and well-used to operating in the sometimes stormy North Atlantic.
In very general terms, the Royal Navy is structured for operating within NATO in three roles. Anti-mine and submarine warfare in the shallow coastal waters of the Channel and North Sea, anti-submarine warfare and convoy defence in the open waters of the North Atlantic, and amphibious operations with landing craft and helicopters to give rapid support whenever needed in the NATO area. Currently, this effort is mainly directed to northern Norway. In the mine warfare role, the newest design of mine hunter at sea is the Hunt class. She is the first ship of the size to be built entirely of glass-reinforced plastic. Non-magnetic materials have been used extensively to ensure her safety when searching for magnetic mines. She searches for mines with high-definition sonar and, once a mine has been located, launches a remotely controlled vehicle and guides it down and alongside the mine to lay its countercharge. The vehicle then returns to the parent ship before the explosion. One of the main anti-submarine weapon systems in the Navy is the nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarine, which is very fast and has long underwater endurance. They're fitted with long-range computer-assisted listening devices, and once a target is detected, they would close silently to deliver an attack using a homing torpedo. To attack enemy warships, these submarines will be armed with Sub Harpoon, which is an underwater launched missile. On reaching the surface, it flies at wave top height to intercept its target. Working with our nuclear submarines will be the conventional diesel-electric submarines, which, although not so fast, are very quiet and difficult to detect. Fast groups of destroyers and frigates might be operating closely with our submarines. A typical task group would be led by one of our Invincible-class carriers, the first ships to be built with the British Ski Jump for the launching of the vertical or short takeoff and landing Sea Harrier aircraft. The Sea Harrier is designed primarily for defence against enemy aircraft, but is also capable of attacking targets both at sea and on land. It is a very effective aircraft. hunting submarines, Invincible carries Sea King helicopters, which search for submarines by using sono boys, which radio to the aircraft any underwater noise they hear, or by using a sonar detection device that's lowered beneath the water. When the enemy's been accurately located, an attack is made with acoustic homing torpedoes, or depth charges. Other ships in the task group would also be searching for submarines using their own sonar systems, attacking with ship-launched acoustic torpedoes. For delivering torpedo attacks further away, frigates and destroyers carry their own aircraft, and increasingly this is becoming the Lynx, a versatile aircraft and capable of flying in nearly all weather by day and night. The Lynx carries torpedoes and the new Sea Skewer missile, which can cripple enemy warships.
For use against enemy surface ships, most frigates are now armed with this Exocet sea skimming missile system, now widely in use in our ships. Descending, good, good. The Sea Dart missile system used against air or surface targets is considered to be among the most effective medium-range systems in the world today. The newest close-range missile system, Sea Wolf, is now at sea on our Type 22 frigates like HMS Broadsword. It's so accurate that it could even destroy approaching shells. Our latest gun at sea is the fully automatic 4.5, which is capable of firing over 25 rounds a minute. It's also very accurate. Ships of the fleet must be able to stay at sea for long periods, independent of shore support anywhere in the world. Fuel, food and ammunition must be brought to them wherever they are. This is done by the Royal Fleet Auxiliary in a fleet of modern ships designed for the job. crews are among the best in the merchant service. They work very closely with the Royal Navy in fair weather and foul. The Royal Navy is responsible for the protection of our offshore interests. A special class of ship, the Island class, has been developed for this purpose. As well as supporting our fishing fleets, they ensure that international regulations for the size of nets and catch are enforced to protect our fishing interests of the future. They also police our offshore oil interests. Great production platforms like these are now operating far north of the Shetland Islands right up into very deep and dangerous waters indeed. If ever a terrorist organization tried to take over one of these platforms, it would be men of Camacho Company Royal Marines who would get it back again very quickly. The Royal Marines are the Navy's sea soldiers, highly trained in amphibious warfare. They also provide the commando units, which are assigned to NATO for defense of the Atlantic Islands and Northern Europe, specifically Norway. Most of these commandos are Arctic trained and spend some of the coldest months of the year in Northern Norway, where they must expect to live and fight in temperatures down to minus 40 degrees, and that's very cold indeed. They're supported in the amphibious role by assault ships designed to lift them and their equipment to any part of the world and land them over a slipway or a beach. The Royal Marines also serve alongside their army colleagues in Northern Ireland. All these forces are essential to conduct a conventional war. But the Royal Navy also provides the United Kingdom's contribution to NATO's ultimate deterrent to all-out war, Polaris. Faz Lane in Scotland is the base of our four ballistic missile firing submarines, at least one of which is always on patrol. Dive submarine, open main vents. Revolution 5 6. Armed with 16 missiles, each one capable of delivering a devastating attack, a Polaris submarine stays hidden in the depth of the ocean for many weeks at immediate readiness to fire. 
It epitomizes at the highest level our determination to deter a nuclear attack on our country. Of course, ultimate control of these weapons always lies with government. Officer, watch check speed. Speed is uh, 12 by 12. Approaching Willow for service of the new course. Oh, how do you do? One, one uh, three zeros, the new course appears clear, sir. Oh, yeah. Zero, two, nine. Zero, two, nine. Zero, two, nine. MCR bridge. Start and select. Port and starboard and Olympus. Captain Roger. Steer, 195. Roger. One, nine, five. We are the strong track wipe line, so I would like to steer two zero zero to regain. Steer two zero zero. Good job. Starboard ten. Starboard ten. Okay. <laughs> Starboard 15. Lever 86. Lever 86, sir? Yep. Lever 86. East to 5. East to 5. Oswatch. Roger. Yes, yes. When we, if we get these, Captain, we're still close in. Put one in the overhead, send the other out to 4. Tension is to fill 4 and 5, ultimately. Roger. Not able to give you arcs. This is X7 Quebec for power line, search of contact 5050, now there's 254. That is, you ought to keep reporting. Is it on the link? How's the contact gone on the link? 5050. Zero, five, zero. A blind PWO. 220, two, Roger, starboard 15. Starboard 15. Northwest uh, to give weapon arcs for an air attack coming in Roger, from the west. Echo Mill Parcel Stand. Uh, this is uh, 8 Echo Echo, heads up, bogey 5076 Alpha Sierra 5, uh, birds no can, out. Uh, blind over when it gets into the clipper. So he's the one. With dark. Now you're all right now then, uh, we stretch your leg up, we're going to put you back in the Neil Robinson and take you back down to sick bay so that the doc can have a proper look at you, OK? Side, make the pipe. Mark the plot. Man overboard. Mark the plot. Sound. Set short blast. Lever five six. Lever five six. Port thirty. You've got a moment, let me know what's happening. Right, Look out, bridge. 
Voyager 059, 400 yards. Keep your eye on the map. Emergency, emergency. Clear lower deck. Clear lower deck. Put him in the tube. Right, down to that next one. Come on, BA controller, you should be up here doing this, not me. Right, out phone tubes. You've got to protect each other from this fire. Okay, let's open the hatch and you turn your back away from the, the hatch. Okay, do it, number one. Back away, and that will fall right in the corner. Okay, well done. Drop your hose down now. They're coming up over the top. They're coming over the smoke boundary. Good morning, all ships. This is Loyal Signal Station Gibraltar. All ships passing through the straits are requested to pass their travel reports to Lloyd Signal Station. Have to be removed. The screen gem is a toothbrush. You have slight inflammation around by a. Morning, Henderson. Morning, How sister. Are you? Not too bad this morning, thanks. Take your temperature. Do your part. Thank you. You look very well, I must say. <laughs>